We were talking, uh, we had Steve Greeley on, start of the show, not sure if you heard that. <clears throat> Obviously talking about uh, development camp and some of the players here, Dylan Cousins, but I think the big name here, and big name, no pun intended, because he's six foot six, but Tage Thompson. Craig and I talked about this yesterday, Hammy. Um, we see this as a team, as the team saying to him, we want you to be as ready as you possibly can and give you the best advantage, the most advantage and best opportunity to make this team coming out of camp. But not only make this team, with with Jason Bottrell's comments about Sam Reinhart, maybe seeing him as a guy that could maybe handle his own line and not necessarily just as Jack's wingman, might open up a spot for a young kid, cost-efficient player on the right side, kid that can shoot the puck like a Tage Thompson. That's got to be a wide, uh, like, doors open wide open for a guy like that. Alex Nylander's not here. Had the option to come. He's not here. Tage Thompson is. Steve Greeley said he, uh, T Thompson came in. Happy to be here. It's interesting what he talked about working on. And you guys, this won't surprise you guys because you know. But a lot of people are thinking he needs to be stronger. We all know that. It's not bench pressing, lifting weights, and getting muscles in the chest and shoulder. That's not <clears throat> what he's working on. When I ask him what he was working on, it's his legs. He's doing weightlifting with his legs. He's trying to get his legs bigger. Why? Because that's when you're able to get leverage when you go into those battles and you engage in those battles. How, how do you think a guy like Nathan Gerby wins battles? Because his legs are like tree trunks. See William Carlson in his jean shorts the other day? Yeah. Don't worry about the, the jean shorts were awful, but the legs popping out underneath were amazing. That's well, how, and that's the bar's how, a bit higher, but there's a guy that wears number 87 in the league. It's all about what happens. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's it's power. planning your legs, the power in your legs, and to be able to to compete that way to win battles. So that's what he's been working on a lot in the off season so far. And he said, you know, he's looking forward to the. He's only halfway through the off season. He's looking forward to the next off season. And Craig, I know you're shaking your head. Yes, I know this doesn't surprise you in the least. Well, you know what? Uh, I, I I go back to a long time ago. Um, I was drafted in '92. And, and when I went to my first couple camps, I remember going there and, and doing our testing and our fitness testing. And I remember being very observant, watching certain players do their testing. And, and, and what I found out was the North American hockey players were bench pressing all the bench press because that was one of the tests. <clears throat> we were bench pressing. I shouldn't say we because I was pretty weak at the time. But all the North American players were bench pressing a ton. It was like they were lifting houses, just power, so much power. And then they got up and they walked away and they had legs that were this big. Mm -hmm. And then the next guy comes in and he's a European guy from Czechoslovakia. And he would get on the bench press and he couldn't even lift the bar. He couldn't even lift like the 150 pound bench press that he was supposed to be able to bench press. He had no upper body, but then he got up and he walked away and his legs were like literally tree trunks. So when we got on the ice, we, I, I started to watch these these uh, North American players versus the European player, and I started to realize the European hockey player was so much faster. And here's the thing. You remember that guy that we talked about that couldn't bench press 150 pounds? He was almost impossible to get the puck off of in the corner because his legs and his power and his stability in his lower body was impossible to move. So what I'm trying to say is North American hockey started to realize it's not about how much you bench press. It's about your legs and your core and your lower stability. And you need that for power skating and to be able to fight in the corners for pucks. Well, and in front of the net. And I only bring that up because a great drill that your buddy Matt Ellis and the, and the crew are running here from Harbor Center. Tage Thompson was in tight against the post and jammed in a bouncing puck. That's not the goal people expect Tage mm -hmm. to score. It's a shot. But right after the coaches came over and they're tapping like, that's it. That's exactly where we want. He has good hands, as you brought up, PD, early on. The guy's got good hands. Well, the, the reality his is, position a good hand. You just gave if, me to the if, shoulder. Well, Dan. you were ignoring the show. If <laughs> the side of the net, yep. park the two buses there yes, and sir. say, try to move me. Yep. You're going to get a bouncing puck. It's a, it's a, it, I was going to say it's an easy goal. It is if you've got great hands. You're like, I'll do this all day. They can't move me. Well, if he improves over the puck, 
no. he is going to take his game to the next level. That is what's going to help him. We know he's got the shot and all that, but if he yeah. improves over the puck in the corners, around the net, yeah. that's what's going to take him to the next I level. I think we, well, we talked about also, like we're talking about he needs to get stronger on the puck, but what you just talked about right there, mm -hmm. if he does that this year, he's going to get 12 goals by being three feet away from the net. And how many will he screen the goalie on for the rest of the guys? Mm -hmm. Another yeah. another 30 or 40. Just okay? assisting for but the screen. We all know that Tage Thompson's <clears throat> skill set, his hands and his shot yeah. are elite. He is going to score goals next year with his shot and his release. But if he wants to score 20-plus goals, He's got to get in front of the net. He's and got to establish body position. Remember the play in He's Detroit? got to make it tough on all these defensemen that want to move him out. And then once the shot's taken, the rebound, just like that one that you just described, that's how he's going to score 20 even further What we talked about earlier, two-way game. The guy's got to be able to use that power in his legs to skate, get back, retrieve the puck from his position in his own zone, start the play up, and then get to all the areas that you talked that's about. That's right. Were you calling the Detroit game toward the end of the year? Uh, in Detroit? No, I think RJ did that one. Because that game sticks out to me because Tage Thompson had a... We talked about this play. He didn't score. He had a prime-time play in front of the net. He made a play. He spun around in tight, and he brought his hands in close, and he got around the goalie, and he went to, he went to shelf it, and he shot it over the net, or he shot it wide. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. And it was, a, it was a goal. I mean, he, if he's a more relaxed player, more confident, he's scoring that goal. Like, like we talked about, like he goes to the minors, he gets that feel back. He, he'll score goals like that, but to what you're saying, if you say he's scored 12 goals standing in front of the net, yep. add another eight or nine with his shot. Easily. And I say, and I say with his shot, the only, the only thing I'll say about Tage Thompson that I picked up from him, and who am I to speak? I mean, I don't want someone to be like, I, 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 your role and your goals and whatever, but he, his release is a split second too long for this league. That's why he scores goals in the AHL, not the NHL. And when he, when he speeds up that shot, that, that release, playing on a line with a guy like Jack Eichel. How does that come? Well, how does, practice? how does, how do, well, how practice? does a guy when he's 21, 22 years old, 23, you know, he's around, uh, let's say anywhere from eight, uh, maybe 13 goals. And then all of a sudden, once he hits like 23, 24, 25, now he goes to 25 goals overnight. It's because he understands the pace of the game. Yeah. He understands that things need to be quicker. He understands that he's now playing every single minute of his time with elite uh, NHL players. And he understands as he gets older, he starts to he starts to pick up on these small things. We're talking about Tage Thompson needs to work on one uh, one piece of his game that is going to be um, extremely extremely important, and that's the strength of his body, lower body strength. Going to get a little quicker, a little faster in small areas, all the way down the ice, battling in the corners. But these are things that people need to realize, and I think we all need to realize, because I know I was one of those guys that was pretty, pretty thin. Um, I had to put a lot of work in, but it doesn't happen in one year. It does I, not happen in one year. We all know that Tage Thompson needs to work on this, but don't think that he's going to be coming in at 225 pounds and he's going to be all this powerful. It's going to take years for him to continue to build I was just going to ask you, how much do you this? as a development coach, which these are development coaches, how much are you careful not to put too much on this guy's plate or any guy with potential? So you come in and as Paul said, all right, he's working on his, his lower body strength. So how much do you put on a player's plate right now? All of it. Taste, you, you put it all? Oh, I, I think so. I mean, because one's in the gym and one's just extra. I mean, um, shooting pucks. I mean, they have they have here. If, if he stays here all summer or wherever he goes, I mean, you, you can put the you can put the work in in the gym and get, get stronger. Then you can go and fire three four five six hundred pucks later on in the day i mean you can split your workups out uh, workouts up it's not they're not considered two a days yeah. shooting shooting pucks should be fun it should be fun anyway so you know they have the machine over here at the rink where yeah, the, it do. spits pucks out to you and you can work on your release and and it scores your shot i think they still have it yeah they do anyway so yeah, yeah i mean that's a great way to do it we didn't have that when we played we had to rely on what somebody was the else question to pass, that you were asking well, pass just, just how much you put on the plate of someone who's trying to digest it, it's easy for all of us to say he needs to do this better he needs to do this better uh, player x needs to do this better 
So at, when you see someone that has all these tools yep. at this level, and you're thinking, hey, this guy can be an NHL player, let's make sure he get, this is this is number one on your list. Number two, number three, do you give him a list of 10, making him think, oh, I got 10 things I got to work on? Does it overwhelm a player? I don't know the answer. Does he I'm have not 10 things there. he needs to work on? I don't know, but I'm saying how much it would overwhelm a young a young mind I, I today. Think, I think when you I think when you look at Cage Thompson in particular, and he's only one player player of many that need to work on things. Yeah. Tage, <clears throat> Tage Thompson in particular, and his he's he's got a great skill set. For a big man, it's incredible his hands mm -hmm. and his shot. His mobility. And he's, and he's a nice skater, but he needs to work on one thing. He's also 6'6. He's not 5'11. He's six six. He's lankier. He's longer. He's not going to put on the same power and strength as maybe what a guy who's five ten, five eleven, six feet tall. It's going to take longer for him to to develop his body. And I think once he develops a little bit more power and strength in his lower body, like Paul says, that's going to elevate his game in general. Yes, I I was just as you're saying that, and I, I was thinking that's where you were going to finish. Was strength alone makes him a better hockey player? No question. With that alone, if he just goes to the gym and puts on weight and yeah. doesn't shoot pucks, he's going to be a better hockey player, no matter what.